hi this visual basic job estimator tutorial I developed earlier so let me just show you guys how it works so I will enter maybe Steve right there Steve King and the date of birth and that is that for Steve right there Steve's address is King Kingsway Kingsway Road Let's give, us, let's give it a number right there and we need about eight meters of copper pipe nine meters of chrome pipe five meters of plastic pipe and uh, three hours and it's traveled actually let's say four four miles the job is the, the job will take three hours and it's traveled four miles so all I just need to do now is uh, if there's a discount for Steve, we can always check that and just click. Supposing there's no discount, okay. So we can also maybe let's click on the ad and that is selected. So we can, let's say we want to enter Steve's data in the system. That's Steve King's six meters, seven meters, four meters, six hours, and six miles click on total so to add all you need to do is click on the save button right there and that's you will see all of the information right in there and you see that straight in there now for the reset it's either you click on this button to take you straight to the receipt right there that's the receipt and you can always use the use your calculator to work out what the value is and even convert from one currency to the other right there so you have everything in within this very tutorial so let's say we convert into Kenyan currency just click on that that's it okay that's how the system works so what I will do now is to take you guys straight into visual basic development environment and show you how I've put this tutorial together it's a bit long but you can do it let's go hi and welcome to visual basic tutorial I'm gonna be creating a new tutorial and this I'll be calling it job estimate or make sure your window form application is selected though all right and that's my form right there so i changed the size of that form to 1366 by 700 there and let's change the back color to black you can just type in black color there and that is it so the next thing i will do is to import my database so if you want to import a database make sure you go to data add new data source next next select new data I ain't, I'm not using SQL so I'm going to change that to access database and this uh, add data connection pops up browse for wherever my database is I have a couple of database here some of those you guys may have they still recognize for those of you who are used to my tutorial okay there we go I'm gonna be using this login system and right here get rid of username test my database and make sure it's connected yes it succeeded click on ok now click on next this message right here is just telling you that the, the data will be saved in the project folder say yes click on next and i'm just going to select this if i select it that means i've selected all, the, all of the components in here in this table the job table and the login table as well and just accept that that's finished so the next thing I will do is uh, let me get a tab control one tab control right down here 
and the size of that tab control maybe make it approximately 1300 and maybe this one make that about 200 okay that might be a little bit too long though but for now if there's any other changes I'll take care of that as we go along and the next thing is I need a panel here change the color of this panel to instead of black let me change it to control so that you guys can see it the color control is the default color for this visual basic program that I'm using really alright let's move this one down here a little bit and the size of this panel let's go for maybe 600 plus 650 yeah that's fine just copy it across I'm gonna need two of those click and just hold on the control and copy that's the second one right there hey yeah, that's good looking good so maybe we increase the size of this a little bit more yeah that's fine okay if I run the program right now this is how my system looks like okay so what I'll do next is let's go to go back to data source show data source there okay this very icon right there I mean I'll click that and just drag it drop it right in there and that is it that's the table right there I'll drag it along okay all right that's the size of my table maybe a little bit too long let's reduce it a little bit more yeah about that all right the next thing is to get the details let's get the details right there so I like that if you like I'm just gonna drag it all I will speed this up and uh, get back to you guys yeah this is how the interface is looking right now if I run it and just to show you guys how it's gonna look that's how my system will look I've actually left some space here so that I can add some buttons for the for most of the operations so I'll close that all of these are not needed anyway so let's close that so the next thing I'll do is just to add a label here just up here let's add one label right there and maybe copy that same label yes maybe one here there's a label here and there's another one I think here yeah right there I think both, la both label let me change the color of both label to white back color or font for color change that to white there okay they'll be used as timer and dates okay so let's move this very one to the far end right there move it right there okay that's fine so now double click on the form let's get the name of this label first this one is label one and the other one I suppose will be label two okay maybe we'll just give it a name LBL time and the other one will be LBL date LBL date now double click on the form and right here this was generated by the table for your information right here so I'll enter LBL date dot text equals today there so that should give me today's date in the case of time I'll like the time to be a real time so I might as well enter Let's get a timer. We need a timer for that. There we go. Double click on that. We get our timer right there. And double click on the timer right there. I'm going to enter LBL time dot time equals time string right there. This very one. Okay. 
I will now go into my form load that's my form load right there and just call the timer okay just make the timer start right there timer dot start there so if I run my program just before running it let me increase this font size there and select the other one let's increase the font size to something a little bit bold make that bold 10 that's fine so let's run the program now there what you would notice is today's date and the actual time okay, that's about 4, uh, 4 or 4 30 okay now the next thing I'll do is to maybe write a line or two for this to generate a random number okay let's come in here I think I'm gonna need a button let's get a button well maybe we should let's place the buttons inside a group box change the color of that group box make it visible there and that's where all my buttons that will trigger most of the events will be so let's come here get a button there let's place a button there we may have to even change the size of that button so let's copy it across anyway we only need a couple of those how many I don't know because I'm just working on it as I go along so let's change the name of these to be PNT exit right and change the text content of that to exit there okay. now let's enter one or two lines of code for that application dot exit okay that's taken care of the next one here is very button right here I'm going to call that total and that will be known as I'll call that btn total okay I think maybe I should call this the next one btn play or cancel that's fine also btn set okay that's for the next one the next one the next button we call that reset so that will be bt and reset right there okay what else do we need okay this maybe we should have uh, let's get rid of this for now we can always add one more okay those are the buttons I intend to use for now let's increase the font size to something a bit readable okay let's go for 20 that's fine okay double click on this very total button but before then I need the name of this job so that's a uh, job ID text box that's the name given to it by the data control so double click on total place that in there dot text equals okay that will be equals let's make that an integer value so let's go for 32,000 plus multiply that by RAM so the whole idea is just for this to generate random number for me that I'll use as my customer reference number so if I click on that you see this is the customer reference number for this particular customer right there okay the next thing well maybe let's just say yeah why not let's come in here copy this whatever the reference number might be it might end up it can always default back to zero so say this let's add a thousand to it there 
So if I run it, let's see what would happen. Generate. So anytime we default to zero, at least we have a value in there. Okay, that's taken care of now. Okay, what I will do next is to add some. Uh, let's get some array to take care of all of these material right here I have five of them in place so go to the form right up here declare an array then then maybe material or job or job details let's make that four let's go for as double there okay that's my job details there and right here inside form load let me break it up let's break up whatever the job details might be underneath here so array zero equals this would be the cost of the job of the labor so let's make the cost about maybe 25 pounds 99p an hour there okay. this is for labor uh, power okay then the travel cost there's that in there the travel cost let's say a mile is three pounds fifty that's for travels and this one will be for maybe copper pipe sorry about that copper pipe per length per meter actually and let's change it around again okay this is three four there and this one maybe make this about seven one all right this would be for the chrome the whole idea is just for us to develop a system that uh, a plumber can use okay that's for plastic pipe so then that's why i'm calling it a job estimator so when this guy travel to you you have to pay for per mile you actually pay three pounds plus and the cost of labor per hour the cost of the materials there they are okay so now what we then need to do is oh we actually have to know the names for all of these components right here so for copper pipe that's copper pipe chrome and so on so let's get their names okay for copper that's the name of copper pipe right there so I'm going to double click on this one right here double click on total and write in here total dot text that's copper dot text equals whatever is in there we need that that's copper is job estimator to there copy that whatever is in there equals that multiply by this actually but there's something there's something I think is wrong I think I'm gonna need yeah in here subtotal right my result should go inside the subtotal okay let's come down go back to Let's come back here subtotal there so if I run this program now and I select an item in there okay there's something in there already so if I click on this it's give me the the price so all I just need to do now is to convert this to pound sign so I can always come back in here and just copy subtotal right there equals format Format currency is that 
there so that's that's the sub total formatted so let's run it and see and enter a value in there and that is that so what I'll do next is maybe let's get rid of all of this data inside inside the system I think I'm gonna have to go straight into the database and get that sorted okay as you guys can see I've got rid of the data in there so I can freely enter whatever I want in there so I've only just taken care of this so let's run that again there okay so let's continue we now need the name of this very one right here and that one is called as you can see chrome pipe chrome pipe text box copy uh, scroll right down double click on that it's going to be a very short program really and close that and plus whatever is in there dot let's go for text yeah and chrome pipe is multiplied by this right here might as well place each of them in a bracket yeah that's in a bracket this is in a bracket as well it's going to look very rough so maybe let's declare a local array right here dim i maybe a local array yeah why not dim i let's make that five four yeah four as double but the whole layout will be di totally different now so what i'll do is come right in here i zero equals all of the components right here this very one bring it here and i one equals everything in here and an equal sign there so all we just need to then do is all we then need to do here is we just say i zero plus i one okay so that's much better and easy to read so let's come for i i2 equals that will be for the copper let's get up yeah that's for that's for plastic pipe what is the name of the plastic pipe right there and dot text now we need the name of okay the array for the plastic pipe multiply that and paste that in there there that's taken care of we just delete this take this off 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 yeah okay what is missing here all right so that will become plus i two and you just add plus i three as well plus i four so all of my rays are taken care of there they're all taken care of so and i'll need two more here let me just copy those paste it in here so all i just need is for the label and i need out of label copy that come in here scroll down that's label that'll be label and we need to change this to three this is four four right there okay the next one here we need the name of okay that's travel so we have travel here there and that is all I think 
for the material so if I run it the, the program now let's run it and see enter some value in there and that is that let's hit and total and I'll get my price supposing there's nothing in here what will happen let's see yeah I suppose so there's there's an error I think we can take care of that let's just say by value so by value should take care of something like that in case anything happen okay I'll just speed that up okay this is how my codes are looking right now up here this is to generate reference number so let's just comment that I'll generate reference number of oh, job number let's just see job number and this very one yeah this very one is yeah it's part of job number as well anyway so that's fine that in there okay and here this is where the materials are calculated these very ones right here and this is for subtotal this is subtotal convert or converted to pound sign okay we now need to work out the tax let's say let's come up here and declare another variable let's come here then I tax as double equals let's say 17.5 that's the tax rate right there so I tax with here we need I tax to be get the name of this we need the name where is it we need the tax there right here that's the name of the tax Okay, tax equals subtotal. Make that by value. Multiply that by I tax. Divide that by 100. So let's cover this up as well. So that will give me the tax. So if I run it, run the program now enter how many meters I want and uh, hours of labor travel click so that is the tax rate so we need to format this that's the tax rate which is 76 pounds plus and all we need to do now is add this to this to get this okay let's come in here let's format I tax we copy all of this copy come down here then copy i tax or copy the tax and just paste it there so that will take care of that now we need the total total was the name of the total that's total right there copy the total come here paste that in there dot text equals whatever value we have in here in yeah whatever we have in here so this very one tax by value plus by value we need this okay as that taking care of them one important thing is the formatting formatting them to currency and we have to paste that right underneath and we need to also format that of the total as well let's format total as well to pound sign from down here copy and paste there so if i run my program now enter my item in there 
and just click on total that is it if you add this to this and that is what you get so the other thing is discount discount is optional if you want any discount i think we need a checkbox for the discount maybe place that in here let's get a checkbox so we just call that checkbox customers discount increase the font size of that let's go for 18 there and that will become customers discount okay move it in a little bit if that is checked then the customer will be entitled to, to some discount let's give that a name chk cost discount so let's go into the total double click on total so with the discount in now the whole program will look a little bit different let's get this thing sorted so right up here yeah let's use an if statement if chk discount dot check equals equals true or false equals false then all of this happens right here let's say end if right here all of those happen the else if else if if it's ch check equals true now we need the discount I now have a variable here discount copy all of that discount equals all of these let's say we're going for about 10 percent discount let's multiply by 10 close there divide by 100 that is the discount okay so we multiply everything here by 10 and divide by by 100 it goes in there and we want that information to go straight in here like that goes in here equals discount yeah now there are some changes here now I only need that to work with total so let's bring all of these down we need this everything here I need all of this information here for subtotal I also need this for this and I in the case of total I just need to minus as follows okay total let's get total total equals total minus discount right there now let's copy all of this paste that here and hopefully that should work okay let's run our program now and Let's see, enter for the, the, that is without discount, so this discount now is zero, supposing that is checked, discount, look at that, so if you add this to this, that should give us 203 plus, okay, let's uncheck that, so you see what I'm talking about, that's it, it's 203 pounds 93 pence with the discount. If you work that out, okay, 
that should give us about the same thing all right so this is working as we want now all we just need to do now is to enter our customer name and so on and to achieve all of that we need to make sure all of those information goes straight into our database all right so clear is not working receipt is not working yet so let's take care of those so we need the name of every single component right there all right so let's come into clear or oh, receipt that's receipt double click on cancel so we can just have all of these maybe all of these copy them and delete that's cancel right there there so that is taken care of and now we need the names of the other ones let's see what's what's the name that will be job something I think I have that somewhere so let's go for the one I don't know first name okay first name so on paste that in there dot text equals now job there we go dot text equals there let's take dot text Okay, we have that of travel. I think that's about all. That's everything, I think. So if we enter as follows there, let's go for look, look man, date of birth, and address Brixton. Okay, now telephone number email address look at man dot com and let's make some purchase there okay click on that auto that is working and cancel yeah that's working as we want all right what is next for us to do now is to take care of the receipt and this let's make sure this works let's click on that and enter some data in here Let's go for the Yankee. All right, date, address, town, town send, and enter some value in there. Okay, telephone number. Okay, click on that working the add and that is it you can now store your data you guys can see that all right click on play so if I play it the data still remains in your bank so what I then need is to get this working let's get the receipt part of it working exit so let's double click on the receipt the receipt right there paste it on the receipt dot append so maybe we can just enter let's get a tab in place first that stands for tab yeah tab and let's enter as follows um job estimator estimator receipt there and VB new line there close that so what we then need is we need to know what we actually buy let's go for the following we need chrome where is it okay let, let me just take care of this first 
is this let's take care of this discounts and do that let's say discount if there's any discount check the discount enter some information in there and just click on total all right that's not working let's see what happened i think the error i've noticed the error now is because i can always leave this the way it was let's leave it the way it was it's because i have not there's nothing inside total and i'm actually deducting something from total so this should be there let's get all of this copy that and right here where is this can there we go paste that in here so we actually have something to deduct from right let's try it again okay discount check enter some value in there all right that is checked with enter our value click on total now that is working let's check out the receipt there okay that's the discount we get which is right there so that's working as expected now and uh, let me just go back into the receipt and complete the coding for the receipt come back in here double click on that I think I'm gonna need more of this copy that okay, put that in the middle so uh, is that right maybe here yeah take this off okay there now we need chrome and so on so let's just get those ones we can copy this so i'll just speed that up and show you guys the codes for the receipt okay now this is how the receipt code is looking from here to here Okay, so let's just give that a try and see. Run the program again. Entered a name here. Let's say Paul Paul Moore. Paul Moore. Yeah, Johnny. Date of birth. address will be captain's town and phone number email journey at gmail.com okay we need to extend that a little bit do we want a discount? Yes. Five meters of uh, chrome, six meters of five meters of copper, six meters of chrome, plastic pipe, mm -hmm. labor, six hours, and travel eight miles. Mm -hmm. Click on total. There. Okay, now let's check out our receipt right there that's the receipt you can see the value everything in there all here is blank so what we need to do is maybe add a calculator so that this guy can always work out his value there okay exit okay i now have the calculator component in place so let's see move that down a little bit okay maybe let's delete yeah that's fine I'm gonna delete this 
Let's get rid of that and just move this up a little bit. Okay, that's good. Alright. I think the next thing I can I think I can always add a converter here as well, cash converter or currency converter in here to make it look a little bit busy because if I run it, let me show you what you guys will see. Although the calculator is not working yet, this is how it looks and all here, there's nothing there. So let's make it look a little bit busy. So I'm going to speed that up and get back to you guys. Okay, this is how the final interface is looking right now, but the calculator is not doing anything yet. So what I'll do next is just group all of this component as and then use an event to trigger the numbers the currency converter is not working as well so let's go into the system select all of these and select these as well click on the property come right here where it says events and click events let me call that button click button underscore click as for that there and the next one select all of these and call that arithmetic underscore function there okay that's taken care of so now double click on the button and enter as follows so this if I double click on 4 you can see the, because they are all of the same name so let's enter it there that's, that's for the button so let's run it and see and let's check it out so we can now enter numbers in there ok but the plus sign and so on they are not doing anything yet alright stop the program Let's go right up here and declare some more variables. Dim first number as double. Dim second number as double. Let's declare two more. Dim operator as string and dim I think let's go for result result um now uh, let's just call it answer dim answer as as double there okay I'm now coming here double click on the arithmetic operators and enter as follows so that is that taken care of so we now need the equal sign double click on that there that's the equals taken care of and also need to clear double click on clear paste that in there and lbl display dot text equals there. so that's that taken care of as well now let's take care of the decimal place take care of that and that is for the decimal place now we also need to take care of back and that's for my thing the calculator is now ready to be used so 3 times 6 equals that backslash plus 9 there. okay the calculator is working as expected the next thing is to take care of the converter exit okay with the currency I need the form double click on the form itself okay right up here then I need the form to load as follows the following the following countries so when I click on that when the form load up all of this data is entered into the combo box 
so let's take care of this now so when we click on this was the name double click on that there dot visible it was false there okay so when we click on it that will come first let's see that if it works okay proceed click yeah that becomes false and we can see all the countries but nothing is working right here we need some lines of code to take care of that okay let's move this aside move it aside and double click on the converter right there okay just undo that for now okay that's the that's the calculation for the converter or the code for the converter but the function that i called here is missing so let's come right down here right here and paste the paste that in there okay what is missing are these variables so i need to declare some variables up there so now scroll up and take care of those variables there so hopefully those errors are rectified there that's fine now we double click on close to take care of that as well and i think that's all for this that's all for this currency converter itself yeah that, that should do it okay now we're getting somewhere let's get rid of this delete that they are gone okay so we run the program now and see how it looks like move this up okay click on this so that i can add my data enter name there so the name is going to be johnny johnny davis okay then date of birth 1903 one okay email address j jd at gmail dot com and here oh that should be email address sorry about that paste this here and let's get rid of all of these that's meant to be telephone number let's make up something there address i just call it uh, maybe frog away okay maybe number 21 frog away all right pipe we have five there there's an arrow here that's supposed to be a nine seven four okay click on total we get our total in place let's check out the receipt that's the receipt right there we can always use our calculator to verify that if we want so we can add these together because yeah let's see discount discount that's the discount right there so we can always add it together to work out how much it is if we take this off we get that total that's it so you can just use that to compare if you want and that's how that works let's click on currency converter and see select anything there all right enter to it's something and just convert the converter is not responding i need to find out why let's see why that's not working let's convert select a country click oh yes it is working i think i need to change the color to black all right let's go back and get that sorted back color select back color should be black not white there so that's taken care of now let's take care of this as well that is that's an eye now let's come here and maybe reduce the size of all of this a little bit 
Increase the length of these ones. Take them up. Maybe the size change that to about 16. And that should do it. Okay. Let's run it again. Alright. Now some modification has been carried out and the name is King King Steve date of birth 1207 okay telephone number ks at gmail dot com oh, come on man there and telephone number there Okay, address. Let's go for Kingsland Road seven five eight six miles travel six hours, and that's eight miles traveled. So we click on total. That's what it gives us. Check on the receipt. That's fine. Let's see. Let's convert it into the yeah, Brazilian. Okay, let's go for two, three, and uh, three hundred and two point twenty three, and convert there. Okay, guys. With that, I'll just call it the end of this program. So you all have a nice day now. If you need the code, you can subscribe and get in touch. Bye for now.